Good day to you, it is I, Justin Hawkins, and this is Justin Hawkins Rides Again, my YouTube channel. This episode is by popular demand, really, because we've noticed a lot of comments um, along the lines of, Here, when are you going to do Queens of the Stone Age? And that, you know, so now we're doing Queens of the Stone Age. Going to talk about the song No One Knows, you know, the, one of their massive hits. I think I would say they've had a few brilliant hits, actually. It was released in 2002. It was critically acclaimed and receiving a nomination for Best Hard Rock Performance at the 2003 Grammy Awards. Cracking little um, inst- awards institution. Yeah, I'll just do the theme tune and we'll get into it. Oh, by the way, I have to apologise. I um, thought that because it's Queens of the Stone Age, I thought I'd probably wear something that was... Um, I don't know what I was tra- aiming for, really. Probably some alt-rock grungy stuff but then in the end um, I've just been told by my producer that uh, I look like a bird watcher or an ornithologist Justin Hawkins rides again 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 so Queens of the Stone Age Formed in 1996, uh, it was founded by the vocalist and guitarist Josh Homm. I met him once, he was lovely. Queens of the Stone Age are known for their blues, I'd agree with that. Kraut rock, yeah. And electronica influenced, I'm not sure about that, style of riff orientated and um, rhythmic hard rock music, coupled with Homm's distinct falsetto vocals and unorthodox guitar scales. Yeah, he's got a lovely sort of, like a, I don't know, like a, a warm sort of upper mid and... I don't know, a little bit of falsetto y stuff. He's just, he's got this lovely voice that seems to sort of jar again. Oh, it's that fucking hat thing's happening again. Is this a longer peak than usual? I don't know how I'm supposed to. Maybe I should get a different. Doesn't matter. Oh, headset microphone. Right, guys? Something to consider. And then you can hear me sipping my tea and stuff like that and lip smacking. All the stuff you love. Kraut rock means cosmic music. In English. Um, It is a broad genre of experimental rock that developed in West Germany in the late 1960s and early 70s among artists who blended elements of psychedelic rock, avant-garde composition and electronic music, among other electric sources. Brilliant. Their heavy rock style, mixed with the structure of electronic music, has been dubbed by Homm as robot rock in an interview with Kuno TV. Never heard of Kuno TV, but I'm sure it's a brilliant little um, TV station. Uh, uh, is it? Let's have a look at the song. This is the one that Dave Grohl plays on, isn't it? That illness, is illness. I love Josh Homme's face. I just love it. It's uh, He's got that sort of effortless sneer, snarl to it. A little bit like um, a slightly less exaggerated Billy Idol, really, to it. He's an attractive man indeed. <laughs> It's good to see a young Dave Grohl playing the drums. He's a, he's brilliant, isn't he? I saw um, Queens of the Stone Age play once at the Interlaken Festival. They were they were on the same bill as uh, Rammstein one year, and I was excited to see them. What I noticed about them was that um, they really did seem dedicated to using old old guitars, proper old amps, you know, stuff that's unreliable. I think, um, and the sounds were hit and miss, really. Like some of the some of the stuff they were playing just sounded really nasty, but it was great. You know, it's really exciting, properly loose. Um, I don't know. I thought I thought a lot of it was actually pretty bluesy in some ways. Do you know what I mean by that? It's really expressive. There's something about a shit guitar played for a shitty old amp that he just can't he can't beat. Guitars should be played by an individual who is right at the edge of their ability. Um, trying their best to control something that will not be controlled because it's old and it isn't shielded properly. The electrics are all sort of um, prone to squeaks and rattles. And I just love seeing that because it's proper rock and roll. That's what this band is, I think. You know, and kraut rock and electronic robot rock and roll. There's a good little production trick which I hadn't noticed before. There's a bit when he goes, Oh, what you do to me? No one knows. But in one of the years, there's a... No one knows. No one knows. Which I think is an old Metallica recording technique. It really sort of emphasises the lyric and does it in a sort of spooky... Oh, did I really hear that? Or did I not hear that way? It makes you second-guess yourself, really. It takes you outside of your comfort zone and makes you think, 
did I imagine that? The answer is no, you didn't. It's a production trick. And then comes the heavy bit. You know when you hear like a moment in a, in a modern rock song when the guitars come in, there's the hard pan. There's one guy over there, one guy over there. There might be one down the middle as well. Um, and it creates this sort of huge, spacious, mega saturated thing. They've done that on here, but again, it's like a, it's such a nasty sound. That it doesn't, it doesn't, um, it doesn't feel like a Weezer song or something like that. You know, it doesn't have that sort of hi-fi quality to the to the guitars. It's just huge and and, you can, and human sounding. It's brilliant. But of course, that bit is all about the drums. And tonally, it completely changes colour again once it comes back to that riff. There's a whole rainbow of tone that's being uh, depicted by all these different guitar parts and all these different amps and stuff. It's probably probably be a really interesting rig rundown to sort of talk about the things that the Queens of the Stone Age used on this record. I'd be interested in that. But then again, I dress like a bird watcher, so you'd expect that, wouldn't you? There's a lovely um, backing vocal arrangement on that second verse. And it sounds like it's Josh Homme's voice. It's just a two-parter. <laughs> What's that? It looked like he was playing it. No, it couldn't be that. What would it be? Hmm. It's interesting. It looks like he struck it. It looks like he struck it in the video behind the where he was barring it to get like a the harmonics on. Like I don't know. If those of you who don't play guitar, this is going to be the way a string works. Is this? There's the nut at this end and the bridge at this end. String vibrates between them. So when you put your finger on a fret. The distance changes and it's a shorter distance that means that the frequency is higher. You know what I mean? So it creates a higher note. But there's a way of um, hitting a harmonic. There's one at the 12th fret which is equidistant between the nut and the bridge. If you don't even need to fret it, you just sort of touch it there and it creates two separate waves here and here that are twice the frequency of the open string. Hear that? It's like an overtone that's higher. But there's other points where you can do like a third um, and other fractions, a quarter, fifth, you get the picture. He's hit one there, which might be that, right across the whole. Yeah, it's that, I think. But I think they've employed a little bit of artistic license um, because it seems like he's struck it behind there, which actually would have the same effect, thinking about it, although this would be the velocity of the vibrations would be smaller because uh, the distance is less great. So, nearly the same. That's just simple physics, which I don't understand or and am um, genuinely uh, unable to articulate with any accuracy. But I think you know what I'm talking about, right? So the actual striking is going to be less uh, audible because you can you can on a pickup on an electric guitar you can usually hear what the plectrum's up to because it's that sort of happening right above it. But if you do it over here, you're only going to get the um, the overtones and the harmonics. It's a lovely effect. Let's done it again. There it is. It sounds like it's the seventh fret on the G string. Just a harmonic. You don't have to fret it, you just tap it. You can even do it like um, after you've hit the string. Right. See? It's gorgeous. <laughs> Some really cool bits when he's licking his guitar. I do a bit of that too. I like to do this one on stage. Like you're licking the guitar and then. And then you sort of um, have a moment like this. Huh? Hmm. 
And then you go back and suckle some more. And people look at you like you're um, just a great big ham. No, no, no. They look at you like you're... I'm assuming they look at you. Like this. Pathetic. So I think the main thing about this song is that really distinctive riff. It doesn't sound like anything else. Yeah, but they've detuned it to C minor, so it's... Kind of You know, they, they would play it up here in the E position, but it's it's detuned by four semitones. I'm not going to do that to this guitar. It would take me a lifetime to get it back up to where it needs to be. But I think that that, that sort of heavily detuned riff is what makes it so distinctive. It's, play, it's not played as, as a, you know, you, in metal, in the noble art of metal, we will often detune our guitars to such depths. But um, in this sort of kraut rock... Um, setting the 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 guitar sounds aren't as heavily saturated this these are more sort of valve amps as opposed to transistors <laughs> you know everything just sounds just nastier i suppose and flappier you get the flap of it a bit more whereas you know a metal guitarist will will strike it in a slightly different way and it will just sound like metal but it doesn't it sounds unique it's um it's the queens of the stone age sound i suppose i wonder if i should experiment with some Detunations. Seems like a lot of work. I don't think I'll bother. I like to do everything in standard tuning, for better or worse. Yeah, uh, definitely not to suggest that any of the stuff that you hear on, on there. Um, is uh, is cheating in any way? I mean, it's, it does make life easier sometimes to detune and and sort of um, can also inspire a different type of writing. If you if you if your guitar is suddenly unfamiliar and you you play you play like what you think is going to be a straightforward chord that you've heard a million times before, and suddenly it sounds like something different, then uh, it can really inspire you to write something brilliant um, and original. I think that's what this song is. It's one of the few sort of tracks from that period of the uh, noughties that really is original. It's got a great drum pass on it, brilliant video, good-looking singer with a lovely sort of soft um, falsetto voice and a super distinctive sonic signature. Of course it was going to be a hit. It's fucking obvious. And uh, kraut rock, of course, meaning cosmic music. Who doesn't love cosmic music? I, for one, certainly do. Justin Hawkins writes again Again Oh yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, watch one of these two videos and uh, forgive me my trespasses, I shall not dress like a bird watcher ever again. Thank you.